Senator Roberts. Thank you, Chair. Um, my third and final set of questions is about aluminium adjuvants. Again, constituents are raising this. A study published in September took biopsies from the brains of older children diagnosed with autism and found their brains contained significantly elevated levels of aluminium, especially aluminium hydroxide, aluminium phosphate, which are present in the hexa jabs. Has the health testing on aluminium buildup in our children's bodies been done using water-soluble aluminium salts, which are not used in vaccine products, or has the research been done using the actual aluminium found in vaccine products, aluminium hydroxide and aluminium phosphate? So did you reference research? Was there a question there about re has research been done? Has the research been done on, on babies' brains using the aluminium found in vaccine products, aluminium hydroxide and aluminium phosphate, or aluminium so water-soluble aluminium salts? Is there, sorry, Senator, I'm just trying to be clear. Is the research that you're asking me about the research that you cited? No, no, I haven't cited anything. Has the health testing on the... The, to your knowledge, has the health testing on aluminium buildup in our children's bodies been done using water-soluble aluminium salts, which are not used in vaccine products, or has the research been done using the actual aluminium found in vaccine products, aluminium hydroxide and aluminium phosphate? Uh, I'm sorry, Senator, I don't know the research that you're specifically referring to. OK. I'll send you some papers. Is the type of aluminium in vaccine products bioresistance? Does it ever leave the bodies of our children? Senator, again, there are, there are a number of very specific and very technical questions that you're asking us that, that for the purposes of answering them, as I've previously indicated, um, we're, we're very happy to take these questions. That's fine. That's fine. I've got nothing on, against taking a notice. OK. Because I, I would like to provide you with as, yes. as, as fulsome response Thank as possible. Thank you. Are repeated doses of low concentration of aluminium adjuvant in a vaccine product more harmful than a single large dose? And a related question, how many vaccine products has the TGA authorised for administration to children containing aluminium hydroxide and aluminium phosphate? Do you have to take them on notice? I certainly will have to take the second yeah, on notice. I, got, I, yep. I only had a concern about your, the one I objected to. The rest I've got no concern about at all. I appreciate that it's a better answer. <clears throat> Individual vaccine products have been safety tested. Has any safety testing been done on a multiple concurrent administration of vaccine products to babies under six months, with special attention to multiple administration of low-dose aluminium adjuvants? So there has been, um, and Professor Langham can, can um, add, add to the response, that there has been um, not only um, significant um, research undertaken with respect to the administration of vaccines, but there is significant real-world evidence over decades on the safety of the administration of the vaccines that we approve. I have nothing further to add on that. Um, as you're aware, we have uh, a number of avenues whereby our safety signals from all registered products in Australia are, are um, overseen for, from a pharmacovigilance perspective, as Dr Lart has already mentioned. Um, we work closely with other global regulators and also um, uh, with other research that's published and, um, as Professor Lawler has said, with the vast body of information that exists in these vaccines and the use in children, there's been no signals. So you can't answer the question as to whether or not... I think I did answer you. the question. Yeah, yes. I think that's an answer. Definitely an answer. I'll ask it again. Has any safety testing been done on multiple concurrent administration of vaccine products to babies under six months with special attention to multiple administration of low-dose aluminium adjuvants? Can you tell me if multiple injections have a different effect from one or two injections? The evidence that exists from a safety perspective is not only the clinical trial data that we receive upon registration, but also the ongoing evidence from a real-world perspective of the use of these vaccines in those multiple dose formulations uh, in many millions of children around the world. Thank you. Last for many, question. For many years. Sorry. Sorry? For many years. Are aluminium adjuvants causing the spectrum of neurological conditions commonly called autism? Uh, I'm, I'm not aware of any accepted evidence that that is the case. Senator. Minister, you may say... Well, do you know why I say... No, I'm, I'm Ms. talking, I'm talking. Senator Roberts, because I have a child with autism and I have my, my vaccinated children and I find it offensive. I, I find it offensive. Well, I find it offensive to not respond to a constituent and I'm responding to constituents. That's well, my job. They enough. pay me. 
Um, Mr. D uh, Professor Lawler, have you heard of these papers? I think this will be my last question, Chair. Yes, it will. Well, I've mentioned one by Dr. Uh, Carla Lehman, 2024, suspected causes of the specific intolerance profile of spike-based COVID-19 vaccines, the European Society of Medicine. LRF G et al. 2022, angiotensin 2 type 1 receptor AT1R, the gate toward COVID-19 associated diseases published in molecules. Fajlun uh, and Sabatia, I hope that's how they pronounce their names, 2023, the unsuspected role of the renin angiotensin system, RAS, could its dysregulation be at the root of all non-genetic human diseases, Bentham science. Parry P. et al., 2023, spikeopathy, COVID-19 spike protein is pathogenic from both virus and vaccine mRNA, Biomedicines Journal. Last one, Palumbo, Avila and Naftalin, 2016, the ovarian renin angiotensin system of RAS, a major factor in ovarian function and disease, PubMed by National Institute of Health, National Library of Medicine, USA. Uh, Senator, I'd be very happy, um, I'll speak on behalf of Professor Langham, if she doesn't mind, to receive those studies. I would say that there is a, um, a very well-established understanding of the importance of the renin uh, angiotensin aldosterone system in a number of various elements of, um, of uh, regulation of um, human function, uh, that they are um, impacted by uh, the COVID disease itself, I think is well recognised. Uh, and it would, be very, it, it, would be, it would be very useful for us uh, to review those articles so that we can be sure that they are um, reflective of um, of the impact of COVID, not, not, not uh, a suggestion. Thank you very much. How would you like how would you like the uh, how would you like the references sent by paper copy as attachments or by links? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm at your pleasure, Senator. Well, I'm chair, uh, chair, chair, I'll be putting forward a number of uh, questions on notice. Uh, um, spike protein. Yes, uh, as is your absolute <laughs> right. Thank you, Senator. Um, at this point, that does.